Come on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ooh, Rappi. Oh, my goodness. The Oak just keeps on giving and giving. Sunny weather, big crowds, and great rugby. Oh, and Leinster being mean about it. Let's have a quick run over the quarterfinals. First up was a cracking display by Ulster in front of a big home crowd. All last week, I was wondering, are Vermeulen, Henderson, Timoney, and McCloskey really as good as I thought? And I was kind of right, they are good. But Hume's even better. Man, they embarrassed Munster. But Munster fans, as I've said before, Asafas never really rated Van Gron. And now you're free of his Uncle Colm style of coaching. There's always next year. Next next was the game of the weekend for me and many other fans. The Bulls in the sunshine in Pretoria against the fire-breathing Sharks team. Which is very scary sounding. Just skills, power, tries and many fans. Everything SA Rugby has been missing since 2019. The Sharks pack had the upper hand but the Bulls defense was just good enough to stay in touch. And then that drop goal. He is hoping for many more matches like this in the Irk in years to come. Then we got Leinster versus Glasgow. Eesh. This was kind of like when I used to play backyard cricket against my younger brother. Just a massacre. And the score was kind of the same as well. Glasgow just had no answer for the pace and the accuracy Leinster were playing with. Hopefully Leinster got their La Rochelle anger out now. And the rest of the teams actually stand a chance. Hopefully. Finally, the Stormers versus Edinburgh. And the Stormers have been playing such a fun, adventurous style of rugby this whole season. Maybe a little too adventurous for the knockout stages. With Edinburgh giving them a real tough time with a good kicking game. The hosts did win though, and they broke their playoff hoodoo. And now, they get to host the semi-final of the first ever Irk season. Very cool. And now, an important point of order. I was completely correct in my quarterfinal predictions. So let's go again for the semi-finals. Friday night will see the Bulls travel to Leinster to try and stop this unstoppable side. La Rochelle showed the world how you could do it. You have to stop them from scoring early by any means necessary and then just destroy them in the first up carries to stop them from getting a roll on. Don't let Jamison Gibson Park pass his little bullets. Stop him. Do the Bulls have the players? Maybe. Except props. And they seem to be one season away from really gelling as a team. The Bulls should mount a bigger resistance than the Warriors. But I suspect Leinster will rack up some points in the second half. Especially when the two benches come on. On Saturday, the newest bitter rivalry in world rugby gets game number two. The powerful Ulster versus the fast-paced Stormers. I can't help but thinking that this Ulster team is really, really good. The Stormers will have to play in much better positions of the field than they did last weekend. They were trying to run it from their own 22. This Ulster backline will punish that. Also, obtain a bloody lineout, Stormers. Jeez. I'm mostly looking forward to a Mr. Vermeulen who has a score to settle with Little Ruiz. Irk 1 is already very successful, and I'm very excited to see who makes the final. My heart says Leinster Stormers, but my head says an all Irish final. Let's hope my heart's right. Oh, there's other news too. Let's see. Hmm, Super Rugby Pacific had their first playoff round two, you know. No surprise that the top four teams made it through to the semi-finals. In my meaningless, absolutely unimportant, totally couch coach opinion, these should have been the only four teams in the playoffs anyways. In the semi-finals, the Crusaders should be too good for the Chiefs, and the currently buzzing Blues should beat the Brumbies. Alliteration! Hmm, what else? Leinster batted Glasgow so good that their coach got beat straight into the unemployment line. Wonder which South African slash Australian slash New Zealand coach will be heading there in the next few weeks slash months. Hmm. And lastly, Rassi Watch! The man's Twitter got hacked this week and our young minds got exposed to some very unsavory content. It was so bad that SA Rugby had to put out a statement and block the account. Though that's probably just Rassi as well, isn't it? Hopefully this all ends well and Twitter's helpful customer service sorts this all up. <laughs> And that's the rugby update for this week. Next week we'll get to see which lamb is off to the Leinster slaughterhouse to be gutted in front of everyone. Whoa, dark. Bye.